right, come on now. How many of y'all ready to take those shackles off your feet so you can dance? All right, come on. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Believe I can break free. You see, I have been down so long, feel like a hope is gone. As I lift my hands, I understand. I should praise you through my circumstances.
on, y'all. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. How many of y'all can declare that over your life? You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're way yes. to open up Atlanta yes. Yes. Live. Such beautiful worship music yes. by the one and the only Rachel Mann. Rachel Thank Mann. you so yes. much, Rachel, for Lord. sharing with us and getting us off to a real good start. Amen. I am Pastor Wandalyn Stokes, pastor of Deeper Life in Christ Ministries on Olympic Court in Conyers, Georgia. And we're so yes. glad to be with you this evening. And also... I'm Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie, pastor of Disciples of Christ Christian Ministries, and we're definitely excited excited to have you here with us tonight. We're excited to be on Atlanta Live. Yes, As we are. As always, yes, it's a blessing. Are. Guess what? We're not here by ourselves. That's right. <laughs> we have a very special guest yes. with us. And let's welcome at this time, Delandra Peterson. Welcome to Atlanta Hi. Live. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. We are so glad to have you. And you are, are such a blessing to the body of Christ for uh, oftentimes one's experiences lead up to certain things that you do. Mm -hmm. And so you're an author and you have released uh, a book entitled Diary of a Hurt and Confused Wife. Wow. And also... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just a lot in the title. Okay, go ahead. And also a devotional entitled One Last Try. Yes. So let's talk about this book, Diary of a Hurt and Confused mm -hmm. Wife. Mm -hmm. What led you to pin such a, wow. a piece of work? Well, it, I'm going to say it started with my father because, you know, I'm a, I'm a preacher's kid. Okay. And, you know, everybody's expecting you to be Miss Perfect. Uh-huh. And I'm the baby, so you already uh -oh. know. Okay. <laughs> Too bad quality. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm um, going through different things that I went through. My dad used to always say, if you can't talk to me, to just write it down. Oh, okay. And I was going actually through my second marriage. I had a lot of abuse going on in my first marriage, and I got married a second time. Okay. Didn't listen to my parents again. Wow. Yeah, and went through a lot of turmoil. And in the process of that, I called my dad one day crying, and he said to me, just write it down. He said, uh -huh. just write it. And that's what ended up happening. I just ended up writing every day for about a year what was happening to me. Wow. Why? Why is it that oftentimes when, when, when individuals are courting or dating and they hear the wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, of our elders, why, uh, when you're in love or think you're in love, why do we <laughs> resist or, or we turn our ears to hearing wisdom? I, I truly do not understand that because I was <laughs> <laughs> listening to a gentleman. I was getting my computer fixed and a gentleman said to me, he said, if young people would just listen to 10% mm. of what your elders would tell you, you wouldn't go through anything. Uh-oh, listen. And I don't understand. I think because I was running from what I was being called on. Okay. okay. And God was reaching at me, and I was like, you know, I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> so right, right. I was running a different direction and was running into turmoil constantly. Mm -hmm. So that was the issues and problems. Well, let's talk about the, the, the power of writing and, yes. and, and the therapy mm -hmm. that goes with writing because mm -hmm. a lot of people in our audience today may be experiencing different hurdles and different mm -hmm. hurts in their life. What did writing do for you and how can it help others? Well, it, it actually cleansed me. And then it made me look at myself mm -hmm. because I couldn't just blame everything on my husband. I had to look at me. Okay. And that's when I realized I was running from something that had nothing to do with him. Wow. Mm. And I ran into a man who wasn't ready for God himself. Mm. 
Wow. So okay. this caused me to go through a lot of, and, and I'm a person, I'm a very passionate person. Mm -hmm. I love to be loved. So God allowed me to use that pain to get me to where I had to be. You know how you just, you want to have a husband, you want to have a good life. I was one of those women. Mm -hmm. okay. And because of that, love just destroyed me to the point where I said, God, I need your love first. How do you actually focus to sit down to be able to share? Because I know even those, uh, Pastor Stokes is an author, and I'm just trying to start this little <laughs> process, but actually putting mm. how you truly feel on paper so mm. that others, it, to me, it's a sense of exposure mm -hmm. that I don't know sometimes mm. if I'm ready for. How is it that you are able to sit down and say, this is my life, and I am willing to share my pain and my struggle with so many others? And you know what? I've had people to call me stupid, crazy. <laughs> You're out of your mind. And I really thought I was at first when I was writing. And I was like, OK, I think I need to do a book. And I was like, no, wait a minute. And God mm -hmm. was like, no, you're going to do this book. Because as I continue to get out of my situation, okay. because when you wake up and you want to die, Wow. And the only thing that saves you are your kids calling you because they were visiting their father. And they called me to say, hey, mom, we just love you. Wow. When you realize that you're willing to give your life away, but the only thing that saves you are your children, you know there are women out there that's not as strong as you. Wow. They might not have kids to save them. So God was like, hey, you have to help someone else. Wow. And that's mm -hmm. the purpose of writing, not so yes. much for a liberation for yourself, but yes. realizing again that the testimony yes. blesses others and allows them. So you begin to go, it was one in here, Pat Stokes. I was looking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just good when you can read. And it says, okay, um, what will make a man leave? Now, in the course of this book, see, I, look, hey, we just want to know yeah. if we're having conversation. <laughs> yes, just want, what will make a man leave? That's a part of it here. What are some of the things that you think that will cause a man, we're in a relationship, marriage, dating, yeah. or whatever, that will say ultimately that this will cause a man to leave? Well, one thing a, a man would definitely say is nagging. Nagging. But okay. I was never okay. that nagging okay. wife. You could stay okay. gone at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then you got other things you got to think about. Because if I'm going to church and I want you to go with me, then it's going to start hitting him hard. Okay. So every time he would do something, I would say, well, why can't you do this? Or why can't you be like my mm -hmm. dad? Or why aren't mm -hmm. you? And mm -hmm. The why aren't you's will okay. make a person want to leave. Not oh, okay. just a man, but a woman, too. Right. You know, you have to allow people to be who they are. And you can't make them be who God wants them to be. They have to allow themselves to be that way. So the redundancy yes. of constantly yes. badgering them and just allowing them to be, as you say, who God is. What would, what would no make you nagging. leave? What would make you leave? Nagging is a, <laughs> nagging, like right? Okay, gotcha. Nagging is a, if you ask me one time, <laughs> men dealing facts and figures. I got my own time and my process. I know you want it now, okay. but my now is not processed. Okay. <laughs> so in 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 you sharing that, right. there's some vulnerability that you had yeah. to say to yourself and identify that you're nagging because I've heard certain ones in dating. I'm I'm not nagging you, and I go in my head and go, what do you yeah. call it? <laughs> how do you identify? <laughs> I'm just being, how do I mean, you, you have identify? To know your mate. If, okay. you're, if you're talking to your mate and your mate gets that look like, <laughs> like they want to hurt you, oh, okay. you're doing something wrong. So there again, just like mama used to give you the look, dad yeah. gave you the look, you got to know the look of your spouse. Yeah. It's true. So you have yeah. to read each other and you have to spend time yes. doing that. Yes. Do, you, do you look at the aspect, as you were saying, some of the problems that you had in one and maybe in another, what did you say, okay, this is going to stop here? I, you know what? It didn't happen until recently when I said it wasn't okay. going to stop. Okay. When I started working on a second book, okay. One Last Try, and that's when I realized that you have to know who you are as a person. Uh oh. Because if you're broken, okay, you can't be with someone else and expect them to love See, you. Now that's good right mm -hmm. there. And I always tell women now, know who you are at the time because you change, you evolve. Yes. So you have to constantly get to know yourself yes. in order to be with the next person. Exactly. Wow. So that's what I, t I had to realize. Okay. You might be a person who loves education, you mm -hmm. love to sing, you love to travel, but your husband is not that person. Right. The person you're dating might not be that person. Right. So you got to learn to coexist together. And if you can't, then that's not the person for you. 
Wow. Yeah. I, I hear her say growing because mm -hmm. even as an individual, things that we liked when we were in our 20s, exactly. we don't like in exactly. our 30s. And I'm trying to figure out when did I change? Yeah. And yeah. so you have to allow that process. So then you say, give it what? One, One last, last try. try. Is yes. that a defining <laughs> moment to say, okay, if it does not go forward after this, then I don't know what to do? I mean, you have to understand marriage is a covenant with God, mm -hmm. it's not just with you and Him. Or right. you and her, it's with God too. Okay. So if you created this covenant, you have to give it all. Yes. You have to give everything you can to make this try to work. And a lot of times it's not because God doesn't want it to work, it's because you might not be ready for it to work. So the one last try is to give you a chance to view yourself, not just view what they're doing, but view okay. what you're doing and see what you need to do to change and then allow them to do the same. It's a book for, you know, the man, it goes one day for the okay. man, one day for the woman. Oh, wow. And okay. you can write your, your comments inside the book mm -hmm. and pass it on to your mate. Your mate can read their day, write their comments, and you can go back and forth and read each other's comments. Oh, okay. A covenant journal. There you go. To be able to do. And then so there's how, activities. How do you deal with it when you're in a relationship, when you're in covenant? Because marriages do mm -hmm. it, dating does it, and you get the outside force. Girl, I told you, you should have left him a long time ago. <laughs> the outside in for, dude, I, I told you, dude, she wasn't they no good, good for you. Those outside, <laughs> when you're wanting to get, how do you get past when you're trying to give it one more try and everybody else is encouraging you mm -hmm. that you should have stopped a long time ago? You have to stop and think about why did you fall in love with that person first? Mm. That's the first thing you have to do. Okay. And one thing my father always said to me and my brothers were, when you're dating someone or when you get married to that person, do not tell me when they do something wrong because when you fall back in love with them, <laughs> right. the family's gonna still be mad. Right. right. So keep right. your business to yourself. Everybody is on Facebook and social media talking wow. about their lives. Why? You need to talk to your mate. Wow. So there's a breakdown oftentimes in, of communication. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What was one of the biggest things that you discovered about yourself mm. that you know you <sighs> needed to develop more in? My um, relationship with God. Wow. Yes, because I knew that he called me. Mm -hmm. I knew this from a young age. Mm -hmm. But I knew I didn't want to be there because I was the little girl who was on daddy's leg all the time. Okay. So when they couldn't reach daddy, if they wanted to get something done, they would come to me or they'd say things uh, around me. You know, people talk about the church hurt they talk about. Yeah. Well, try being a preacher's kid who was so in love with your dad and you're traveling, you're hearing things. So it gets to the point where you don't want to be in church, but wow. you're there faking it because you know you got to be there because you're the minister's daughter. Right, right. So that's what I struggled with. And when I realized my relationship didn't have anything to do with people, it was God, mm. that's when I became a new person. Wow. Mm. So that's what I had to realize. It was all about God and not worrying about who spoke in my ear, who tried to be that siren in my ear. It was about God. Wow. And in the relationship with God, that's when you begin to identify mm -hmm. yourself. So going forward, it's easy to love someone else right. because mm -hmm. now you're finally... Fi it's amazing how we go through life True. living under the umbrella of so many other people until we find ourselves. That is so true. I mean, you have to know who, like I said, you have to know who you are, mm -hmm. but you have to know God first in order to know who you are because he's the one that created you. He's the one who, who has the purpose for you, your divine purpose, your way of life, and you have to know who he is in order to know who you are. Well, what are some of the ways in which you got to know God? I mean, because you, 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 you knew God, mm -hmm. but you didn't know God. You're right, because I was the faker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you might see a lot yeah. of people in church. And I tell a lot of people all the time, a lot of ministers, is that you might have a lot of women in your church that are faking because they don't want their husbands or they don't want you to know that that deacon that's paying the money in church is the person that's hurting me. Wow. So I'm going to wow. keep it inside. <laughs> wow. And I had to learn that when I realized that my love is greater. Yeah. That God's love is greater than my love. Wow. Wow. That I can forgive you for whatever has been done. Mm. Because if God can forgive me for anything I've done, and trust and believe I've done some crazy stuff running from God, mm -hmm. then I can eventually forgive you and love you even past where you are. You wow. know, an elderly, elderly lady told me, she said, just stay there, pray, love through it. I don't think I'm strong enough for that right now. <laughs> you know, they did that. Right, 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 they right, sure right, did. Right, they sure right, did. Right, sure yes. Did. But, you know, sometimes you have to give it that one last try to see because you don't know what God is going to do. He's going to get the glory out of it. Amen. Now, the devotional is with uh, Bishop Marcus Hill. Yes. And tell us about him in collaboration with you, uh, co-author. Actually, we never met each other face to face. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
Oh. Yes. Wow. We never met each other face to face. We end up um, meeting through social media. Okay. And um, he has a, a segment called Love Exist. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that he knew a lot about marriage and relationships, I said, um, we started talking. And I said, well, I'm, I'm working on this book, but I would like a male perspective. Mm -hmm. And he started telling me about his divorce and what he went through when it was so similar. Wow. And I was like, wow. And he was like, well, let me tell you all the stuff I did wrong. And I said, well, <laughs> that's what I want you to do with the book. Yeah, right. yeah, that's right. good. That's good. So that's what we end up doing and putting him in together and just fixing everything together. And I mean, we even had a thought about an evaluation because you got to think about it before you try mm. again, you got to evaluate yourself yes. where you are at that time. Mm -hmm. yes. So you do the evaluation first and then you do the evaluation at the end to see how you change. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. good. It's part of that that journey of growing together, right. yes, learning yourself yes, and, and, and learning from yourself so that you can become a better self. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, how can people get in contact with you? Okay, well, they can reach me on social media um, at Tarsavina, T-A-R-S-A-V-E-N-A, -A -E or you can go to my website, tarsavina.com. Okay, spell that one more time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When we have odd names, yes. we have to spell yeah, it Yeah, you know, because we're people, you speak it in tongue. Tarsavina! Speaking in tongue thing. T-A-R-S-A-V-E-N-A.com. Amen. Okay. It's a blessing to have you here Thank to be yes able to share the ministry Thank share you. with us. Pastor Stokes, we have to be able to find out. Yes. We haven't experienced that yet, so we're trying to, I'm you're single, helping us. Okay. Single, so before, yeah, you're giving us some we're counseling. We're knowing how to go <laughs> in I advance. We do actually get the book because of that. In advance. Wow. So we appreciate That's awesome. that giving That's us some awesome. tidbits. We got a little work to do. Yes, we do. Some <laughs> things to work on. It's a blessing to have you here with Thank us. You. Look, we're excited again. We're learning we're tips. Excited. One thing about God is that we constantly Grow, yes, and that's what and, it's all about. And it's a blessing to know that we're not perfect, as she said, but we're ever growing and ever changing. Exactly. Yes. And you know, you don't want to just be a half. You want to be a whole. And as she said, you can become a whole by yes. getting to know God. And as you know God, because he created wow. you, yes. then you begin to know yourself. Yes. That is so powerful. We're very, <laughs> very, very, we appreciate <laughs> you. You've got to make sure that you support uh, this wonderful author. One last try. Uh, Minister Delandra Peterson, yes. and also the book Diary of a Hurt and Confused Woman. Yes. Well, we're getting ready to go back to yes. some more great it's music, music, right? Yes, it's All time right. to have just a little bit more church. I don't know how much more we can take. <laughs> You're singing out there. She's singing, you all. There's an anointing in this place, and we're excited about it. Amen.
such a man. I don't know where I would be without the love of the Lord. It's important for you to know, guess what? God loves you. There is never a day that goes by that you're not on the mind of God. God has loved you from the foundation of the world. That's why God sent his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. That's right. He so loved you. And I want you to know that wherever you are, wherever you're watching, you may be in your living room, you may be in the hospital, wherever you are, know that God loves you. And because God loves you, God cares about you. And one thing that you can do as a person, you have a right and a privilege to talk to God. That's right. You can pray unto the Lord. You can commune with him. In other words, you can express to God everything that's on your mind, everything that you can't tell anyone else or don't want to tell anyone else. You can talk to God about it. And guess what? God has listening ears. So we here at Atlanta Lot oftentimes love to pray with you, love to connect with you. And we have plenty of prayer warriors that are standing by in the prayer room. And now let's go to the prayer room and to the phone calls. God bless you. I'm Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie. I'm here in the prayer room. We have a lot of people in this room. The Greater Pine Grove Baptist Church. Dr. William Flippin, so many people that are in here to pray for you. We want to encourage you, as Pastor Stokes said, and even Rachel Mann said, God loves you with an everlasting love. I want to say to you, no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, the Bible declared this, that he's married to the backslider. And I say to you, there's nothing you have done in this earth. I know sometimes we feel that though we we cannot be loved by God that I can't go to church. I can't pray. I can't do this. I can't even talk to God because of the fact that I'm not connected with him. God said that I loved you beyond that. And we just give you this. Now the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, ninth verse said that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, all you have to do is confess that and you shall be saved. We want you to repeat that scripture tonight and look at that scripture and say, I want to accept Jesus. I I want him to come into my life. I denounce where I am. I'm tired of being where I am and what I'm going through. I need another option. Well, guess what? We're giving you the option of Jesus tonight. You've tried everything else. You've tried everybody else. And guess what? They hung up on you. They didn't even answer your call. Guess what? I got somebody who the phone is never busy and he never hangs up on you and is never disconnected. Try calling Jesus. Call him in your heart. You don't even have to go to church right where you are right now. You can and pray and say, God, I accept you into my life. Change my life, change my heart, change my way of living. And God, I release myself unto you now. And all we're asking that you want, we want you to do, those that are in the prayer room now, get to a Bible-believing church, a church that is teaching you the word of God that will help you and enhance you to come from where you are. Guess what? We love you here at Atlanta Live, and we're praying for you, and we're believing that God is going to do even greater things in your life. Don't forget, continue dialing that number, 770-300-9828. We have powerful men and women of God in this place ready to pray for you, and we're excited that God is on the cusp of bringing you out of your deliverance. So we're thanking God for you now, and we're believing that the testimonies that you're going to share is going to be the fact that there are others believing and trusting that God is still sitting on the throne. So we encourage you, keep believing, keep trusting. Don't don't throw in the towel. God has great things to, for you. And now we're going back to the studio. How many of you see God do it over and over and over again? I've seen him do so many things. I've seen him work so many miracles. And I want to encourage you that he can do it again for you. So never give up. Keep believing. change to come 
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Oh, you never failed. doing it over and over again. Over again. Wow, there's no over failure again. in God. None. He keeps working it out. Huh? You can always trust God. We're here at Atlanta Live. I'm Pastor Wanda Lynn Stokes, and this is Pastor Yavis McKenzie, but we have some heavyweights in oh, here. Oh, we tonight. have. You know Woo! what? 
It, it's an honor, you know, just to be able to know, you know, everybody I can't say I know. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes when you say you know somebody that got yes. a low weight to them, uh -huh. it's exciting. It's an honor to be able to have <laughs> Reverend Dr. William E. Flippin Sr. and Richard, Pastor Richard Flippin. It's a blessing to have you all here from Thank the Greater Pine and Grove Baptist Church. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. It's exciting. Welcome. Pastor Flippin, as, as far as you being here in Atlanta, Greater Pine and Grove is 104 yeah. years old. Wow. Out of those 104 years, you've been the senior pastor for 28 of those, those years. years. It's, it's wow. a difference when you've had a hundred pastors, yeah. but it's not been that many where you have carried the church in doing that. And just not only that, but God, the vision that you've had to carry through 28 years, just recently, you broke ground on yeah. senior living. Yeah. I know the seniors at the Grove oh, are excited wow. about Ooh, that. They're the already claiming that. their property. They call, their it, they call it now. <laughs> they want to do an application. Yes. With you being the senior pastor there and taking the church to, I've seen on on YouTube where you're saying the next pastor, I've heard, you're not afraid of talking no, about the future. No. Because you know where God has called you to. That's there. right. What has it been for you to take this church from where it has been these 28 years until the current time? Well, first, let me thank you all for having my son, Dr. Richard, and I here. Yes. I do look at you all uh, on, on your uh, telecast yes. weekly, and I just am uh, always drawn by the fact that you all are so positive and uplifting. You know, oh. you see people on on uh, on television now, and they're preaching, and you don't feel nothing. <laughs> you know, but just when you are praying and and when you are talking, you're ministering to the people, wow. and so I'm just so proud to be here. Well, thank and you. To, well, uh, thank you. you. Well, I followed a great leader who okay. you knew, yes. Uh, yes. Being, being raised in that church. His yes. grandmother was a wonderful member of our church oh, wow. and his mother. Okay. Uh, but Reverend Frank Jones pastored Piney yes. Grove for 33 years. 33 years. Yeah, he moved the church from the old Fourth Ward to Glenwood Avenue in okay. 1971. Okay. And so, you know, I came to a good church. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the older members will say to me, remember now, you didn't come to an empty church and a broke church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the old saints are doing. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and I did. And but I, I took time, uh, Pastor McKenzie, to get to know the people. Yes. And yes. allow them to get to know me. Yes. We cast vision together. Yes. And uh, it was like three, four, five months before we changed or did anything mm -hmm. based on what I heard from them and what they heard in my heart. Yes. And the rest is history. It Amen. just started moving when uh, when you get the buy-in, uh, you know, uh, the law of the buy-in, according to Maxwell. That's it. That's <laughs> it. The law of the buy-in. And in the buy-in, God has blessed you. I, I, I look at your life and know for a fact personally that you have mentored so many people. Oh, I'll yeah. just say this, throwing it out there at the Grove. There weren't a lot of women pre Teaching back oh. in the day when you came. No. And I remember the first time you allowed women to even speak, and it was an uproar, not just in the Grove, but in church kingdom, yeah. because it was not allowed. But you've gone forth and created flipping legacy because God showed That's you right. that there was a greater vision of, again, where Pastor uh, Dr. Richard, it's good. He, Pastor Richard, you know you have to get used to saying Dr. Dr. Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Dr. Lord. Richard flipping. But being able to share the legacy that you've pulled your sons, not just one, yes. but your sons into that. And now there are so many of us are benefiting from flipping legacy. Yes. What God is saying to you about flipping legacy so that we can pull past Dr. Richard in? Well, certainly uh, he and his two brothers were bad little boys. Typical preacher's <laughs> kids. Okay. You know, they're calling me saying your kid did this, your kid did that. Mm -hmm. But when they all um, accepted their call to preach, I think I was surprised, except, you know, Dr. Yeah. Richard, Early on, the Lord was dealing with him. He had a very critical illness as a baby, and we knew that God spared his life. And we didn't push him to preach, but mm -hmm. we said, we believe God spared him yeah. for a reason. But mm -hmm. then all the other two young men mm -hmm. uh, came. And the Lord said, well, now, I gave you three boys to practice on. Wow. And look at what you've done. So now you do that to the masses. Okay. 
Okay. You okay. Okay. To the okay. others. Okay. And so, you know, God said, look at what you've done with these three, three okay. boys. And I want to say something about the women preachers, uh, Pastor Stokes. Um, I went to Emory University, Candle School of Theology, yeah. and women preachers. Uh -huh. yeah. And I had friends who were women preachers, uh -huh. and Pine Grove would allow a woman to preach on Women's Day. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was it. <laughs> and so one day my daughter was saying, uh, I think I want to be a nurse. And I said, you know, you'd be a wonderful doctor. Have you thought about that? And so she started naming female doctors she knew. Mm -hmm. I said, I'd be even more honored if you become a preacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> she said, can girls preach? Wow. And I said, sure. And I named some people she knew. She said, well, well why not at our church? Wow. The next deacons meeting, I said I had been a hypocrite. Wow. And that I wow. had not been honest, but that God had called women. And there were about five, six, seven women ready to preach. Well, yes, God. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 In the first <laughs> round, we had 13. You know? <laughs> and so, you know, I had some people that uh, would turn their back when they would preach and things, mm -hmm. but but it opened up the door uh, for women. Yes. Uh, you know, in the last days, your sons and daughters. Yes, that's it, scripture. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. And so uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I will say to those who still struggle with that, yes, the female sir. ministers are far more faithful than the male. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just leave Dr. Richard. <laughs> Look, I don't want him to get in trouble with that. Um, uh, Dr. Richard Flippin, being that you there, uh, our previous guest that was just talking about PKs, how is it from your perspective that you're there as a son? Yeah growing up with the father and now God has caused you to author, caused you to get your doctorate. How is it your vision and your journey, just like the sister that was before, yeah. being from a PK, y'all do get a bad rap. Yeah. Now y'all do do a lot of yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. but you do do <laughs> get a bad rap. Yeah, what is your perspective from the male perspective of saying following in that as a PK? Well, first I find it an honor. Wow. Uh, I find it an honor not only to follow a profession, a vocation that my grandfather, my late grandfather, Reverend Moses Taylor, uh, my brothers are part of, but also my father and yes. so many other preachers I admire, Martin Luther King, Reverend Jerry Black, Reverend Jasper Williams, and yes. so many others. And so I find it a great honor to follow the legacy of my grandfather and my father to do something. Something my father taught us early on is that he wanted to raise leaders. And so as, uh, as we was growing up, he used us as an example of being leaders. <laughs> and so that's my thing, that's, the, that's the, my vision, that's my legacy that I want to carry on to continue to raise leaders uh, to help the church and to build the church. Yes. And so as, as, as you're helping to develop the church mm. and build the church, you have a passion for young adults. Yes. Tell us about that because you've got a book out entitled Reaching Young Adults. Definitely. Why is that such a passion in this day? Definitely. It's very important. Well, first of all, I got my, uh, I wrote my dissertation on young adults. Okay. Uh, how to reach young adults, how to empower them. And one of the things I saw that uh, it was a big void in reaching young adults in churches, particularly my church. Mm -hmm. And so you see many leaders, uh, my father age or older, my father still look young, as I would say. <laughs> but, uh, it wasn't really any representation with young adults in leadership. Okay. And so in order for the church to survive, and mm -hmm. I saw this in our churches that it was mm -hmm. declining, in order for the church to survive, you have to deliberately put young adults uh, in leadership, in the fabric, in the, de in the decision and the future of the church. And so I say this with this, that uh, Moses needed Joshua to get to the promised land and mm -hmm. Joshua needed Moses to get to the promised land. Yes. So you can't disinherit the tradition, okay. but you got to make the tradition uh, relevant to the young adults Amen. because we live in a uh, day and age, young adults are used to Wi-Fi, used to Apple, used to yes. all these things. Mm -hmm. So you have to use the tradition to the tradition of the church, not to hinder the church, to, but, but to make the church progress for the young adults and then like Generation Z or whatever. So that's my passion and I appreciate our church allowing me to incorporate young adults into the leadership. You see our church is thriving, our church is growing because we deliberately put faces, uh, put faces in our leadership and the decision making of our church. And, so, and, and one thing that he does uh, every Tuesday night what do you call it? The gathering? Yeah, the gathering. He uh, has the gathering, and okay. it's 18 year olds to 35 year olds. Okay. And uh, they discuss topics like. Uh, like, uh, particularly, insecure to show HBO. How, how can insecurity prevent you from hearing from God? Wow. And then uh, we did a series on power, the popular show Power, how okay. you allow God to be successful in okay. your uh, decision making, mm -hmm. and uh, so forth. So uh, we have a lot of young adults. So, it's, uh, so Tuesday, we have Bible study. And instead of having 
having that traditional Bible study, okay. we use uh, topics or popular shows okay. to basically talk about how we can incorporate God and Bible in it too. So basically it's more of a discussion instead of someone standing over talking and discussing. So it's yeah. basically a communal learning experience. And it has it set up. Like a lounge. Like a lounge. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. That is good. That's just to engage yeah. them, yeah. like mm -hmm. you said, where they are. I know uh, Piney Grove. I, I love the aspect. I just asked you this question. How do you get people to get up at 715 yeah. in the morning having church on Sunday morning yeah. when it's a struggle to get them there at 1045 and 11 o'clock? Football game. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, you're right. During the yeah. football season, right. the yeah. attendance is up with the men. Okay. Uh, I said, why is he at church this morning? <laughs> but, um, we have deliberately had two worship services that look just alike. So it was yes. a step service. Yes, okay. and good. The first service is traditional. That's good. where we do the long meeting hymn. Okay. We okay. sing the hymn. Yes. Devotion. You know, devotion. Yes. Okay. That's the first. So service. you didn't cut out the no. seniors and let them feel like no. that they've been left out. That's correct. Okay, That's go ahead. That's the first service. Yes, sir. And of course, that is the largest offering too. <laughs> <laughs> it really is because they, okay. they consistent with giving. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, I had some people when the economy failed that had young adults and kind of did away with the older. They told me they said, "Flipping, you were wise because their budgets dropped because those jobs were the ones that were lost." Wow. Uh, but then the ten thirty now that that's what your age you think uh -huh. you are. Uh -huh. you, know, you, know, <laughs> you know, and uh, you think you, know, you are. That, that you think you are. You know, <laughs> yes, sir. And um, dress down. Okay. And that kind of a thing. So. Uh, you have to try to reach all generations. We have four right. to five generations. So how do you reach everybody that when they get out that car, they know they're going to be blessed, empowered, encouraged, wow. and then when they get back in the car, they all ought to be able to talk about what they experienced uh, on the Lord's Day. It, it's several, you have several books, uh, Dr. Flippin, look, it's hard to say Dr. Flippin, both Dr. <laughs> Flippin, but um, being able to share in that the order of the church, te teaching the structure, uh, 2020 vision to be able to give insight yes. uh, versus hindsight of some things that are going on. What is it that you would say to the preachers that are existing today? Because I know there are so many in the Grove. There are so many spread out everywhere. What was it that, what is it that you would say? Because Flippin legacy is that yes. that goes forth and you're raising leaders, what is it that you would say to the young preachers that are under 40 Well, I'm a, I'm a certified life coach with Dr. Chan, Dream Releaser Coaching, and um, I mean, it just goes hand in hand when I became certified that I feel ministry is beyond I-20 in Glenwood. Okay. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. Okay. And so, you know, you can have good church and ministry right there, but what impact are you having with others? And so I maintain that I think churches would grow if things were in order. Okay. If there's order, accountability. Uh, God did not create the fish before he created the waters. Yes. And so that's one thing that I have tried to do <laughs> is good. to create order and then to teach other pastors as I go around the nation. This is, I have a book on church staffing, church administration. Um, and then I, I do those workshops on, on how to come up with a strategic plan. Um, and so those are, and then of course my son with the young adult piece, I share with them how um, we use social media and it's not threatening to older people. Okay. Um, and so I've tried to do that. You know, think of the word legacy. Mm -hmm. I want something to be here after I'm gone. Okay. Gotcha. I want something to be here after I'm gone. Right. And the housing, the gymnasium, the new worship center, feeding 6,000 pounds of food every month. You know, that goes beyond the Sunday morning yeah. service. Right. It goes beyond that. You know, and so I am uh, engaged in raising leaders and um, I, I look forward to it. And one day I'm going to retire. Now, you know, people are like, what? I'm not going to retire from preaching. Right. But right. I'm going to retire from pastoring, okay. you know, full time. And then I want to be able to go to younger pastors okay. and help them not make the same mistakes I made. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. You have, you have been consistent. You are a staple. 
Thank you. in Atlanta. You've mm -hmm. been consistent throughout the years. Yes. And uh, we appreciate. We appreciate. Yeah, if the history books could be written, you would be a major part Amen. of how church has been able to uh, be defined, grow, and be stable uh, throughout the world, yeah, really, yeah, to be honest yes. with you. Um, universally speaking, what do you see the state, how do you see the state of the church today? Yes, thank you. That is great. Um, this year at our church is the year to make disciples. And as I talk with pastors, I think that we are saying that we have spent an enormous amount of time getting members. Uh-oh. That's right. We're not mm. making disciples. That's it. You yeah. talking my language. That yes, sir. people join the church, mm -hmm. get in the choir, but and they may be saved. Yes. But are they a disciple that's mm -hmm. growing in the Lord and mm -hmm. can be a witness yes. of the kingdom right. outside in the secular world, you yes. know, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then this week, uh, and I know when I was coming here, I saw four or five pastors being convicted of how we've turned our churches into entertainment centers. Okay. And mm. they were yeah. saying that, I mean, some noted pastors, you know, uh -huh. bishops, they were saying the early church didn't have all the stuff we have. No. The early church didn't have all this other extra stuff. And they turned the world upside That's down. That's right. And one pastor said, I am sorry, God, I repent that I have made it into an entertainment, a circus, wow. or, or giving the people what they want. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving the people what they want because then it then comes off like it's the Fox Theater. Or the, right, you know, and right. And so I'm dealing with that now is not to have a frozen chosen church. We are <laughs> yes. African Americans and we clap and yes. you understand. Right, right. But is it flesh? Mm. Wow. That's the question. Mm. How much important. of it is it flesh? Wow. That's important. And not wow. driven by the Spirit of God. Wow. Wow. And that, that's very interesting because you're integrating generations. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you know, yes. You're, you're like, we have all the technology, but we are not getting away from the foundation, foundation. of yes. making disciples. Right. We're not making so, disciples. Wow. He said, go. And then, and you look at the word make. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. when you were a kid, I made him sit down. So That's we're right. Not yeah. Making right. Disciples. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Just getting members, collecting the money, and having a good time, but not saying, "Well, wait a minute. You're a choir member, but you're on Facebook at the nightclub." Yeah. Let's, wow. Let's talk. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> a deep conversation. Yeah. Pastor Flip and Dr. Flippins, both of you all, is a blessing I was to have. Pastor yes. First. <laughs> I know. That's why I say it's hard to be able to get. It's hard to get that. It's hard to get that way when you're dealing. As we're about to go. Uh, we want to be able to have people to find out how to get Thank to Greater you. Pine Grove. How do they get to Flipping Legacy? How do they get to Raising Leaders? How do they get to you, uh, Dr. Richard, to be able to say, I, I believe I need somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I need a stable house. Yes. I need yes. a stable place need for my family. Coach, yeah. I need a life, life coach. coach. I need this. How can people get in touch with well, you Well, of course, all? our church is 1879 Glenwood Avenue. Phone number is 404-377-0561. And the website is uh, greaterpineygrove.com, greaterpineygrove.com. All right, and then, of course, the Flippin' Legacy Ministry is 770-655-0217. Someone will call you within 24 hours. Uh, also, our website is... My children say I don't have to say www.flippinlegacy.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and spell flipping for them so that sure. they'll know. F L I P P I N. Okay. Flip in, not flip out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a t shirt? <laughs> right, right, right. A t shirt. <laughs> t shirt and card with it on. But that's just how to be able to get in touch sure. with y'all so that they'll be able to come to the Greater Pine Grove, as we say, the Grove, and yeah. be able to come yeah. and share in the experience. Pastor, there are a lot of people wanting to be able able to share. And again, yeah. Dr. Flippins, it's Thank an you. honor to be able to have you yes, all here with us it. tonight, yeah, and we're excited about that. Well, uh, Pastor Stokes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pastor Stokes, it's a blessing just for us to be able to share. It we is. just got a few moments in being able to do that. It's been a wonderful time. It of really us being has. Able to share. Really the has. hour is far spent and gone, but guess what? We still have some more. Yes, you all, we do. Pastor Stokes has a surprise for yeah. you. Yeah, Pastor, Pastor Stokes, Yavis Pastor has a surprise, has a surprise for you. For you. <laughs> 
you yeah. tune in and stay in, you all. God has believed, amen, through Jennifer here at uh, Atlanta Live and open the door. Pastor Stokes and I are going to tag team preach um, for this next uh, half hour. So Great. please stick and stay. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Get something to write with because we are excited about what God is about to do. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We'll That's be right, right back, we'll you all. Right call back. in 770-300-9828 there in the prayer room, ready to take your calls. Greater Pine and Grove and so many other ministries are in there. They are excited to pray with and for you. Jesus loves you and so do we. We. Atlanta Live. I'm your co-host, Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie. And, and I'm Pastor Wandalyn Stokes. And we're so glad to have you sharing with us yes. on Atlanta Live. Yes, a yes, wonderful yes. time of conversation and music and just some good fun. <laughs> yes. And yes. we enjoyed all the time. We're yes. so glad to have this sweetheart oh, with us. Oh, my God. She has yes. been blessing yes. us. Rachel oh, Mann. Thank you. Yes. thank you so much for blessing us. Oh, my God. God. Thank you. Oh, so wonderful. Sweet. Yes. Wonderful. We're so glad to have you. you. Uh, glad what, what does, what, why do you sing the way you sing? I mean, Ooh. you sound like you've had some type of experience yes. or encounter Ooh. with God. I tell you, I, when I sing, it's like I sing because I know Jesus is standing right there. Wow, yes. Wow. Audience yes. of one. That's it. That's mm -hmm. what it. That's what it's for. You that's know, the it's best. not. It's yes. not. You know, to enter. I mean, yes, you love to. You know, talk and sing and entertain and have fun and do stuff like that. But it's for Jesus. Yes. An audience of one. Okay. You know, okay. Jesus. What did he do? He gave his all for us. Yes. So I want to give my all back to him. Amen. So when I see his face one day, he'll say, Rachel. You know, I want. I want him to say, Rachel, you gave it your all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want I want him to say you did what you were called to do on this earth. And that's that's my prayer. Is that when I sing, talk, walk, whatever, yes. I'm representing Christ. So with the audience of one, mm. now you've recorded and yes. you sing to many. Many. Yes. Why do you yes. think many. God called you mm. to sing to the masses? Wow. You know, from the beginning of time, he's created each and every one of us for mm -hmm. something specific. Uh -huh. Yes. You know, it, it doesn't mean that my calling is more important than somebody else's mm -hmm. if all they're doing is singing in church. Yes. Because they're being obedient. That may be what God has created them to do is just to stay in their church. And that's mm. awesome. Because right. that's, they're singing to the Lord right. and they're right. doing what right. God has created them to do. 
but I knew, I knew mm -hmm. from a little girl, little girl. I have videos of me singing from when I was seven years old, little girl, that I, I spoke it. I, when I grow up, I want to be a Christian singer and travel all over the wow. place. I knew it even as a little girl that this was something that God created me to do. So honestly, it's just from the beginning of time, that was his plan for me. And I just have to remain faithful and continue praying and, you know, God, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. And he has sent you a lot of, places. you yes. have been on many platforms. Yes. God yes. has opened yes. many doors of great notoriety. Yes. And how is it that even their names are so great? How do you stay grounded? Ooh. You have to stay humble. Okay. You yeah. have to. Okay. Because what happens when you get that pride? Pride comes before, <laughs> before the what? Before the fall. Before the fall. <laughs> yes. yes. And, you know, it can be easy, but they're human, too. Yes. They're no different than you or me. Yes. We all put on one pant leg at a time. That's it. Yes. They, and you know what? When you are in the spotlight, the problems are usually elevated more. Elevated, so yes. You have no clue wow. what these people are going through. Right. So, you know, for me, when God has opened doors, and I've maybe sung in front of somebody that's been in the industry, my prayer is, God, would I help me be a witness for them? Yes. Because what I don't know what they're going through. Right. They could be going through something really hard, and you know, I I pray that God will use me to encourage them. You know, God, if there's something I say, help it touch their life. Amen. You know? So. And the good so thing great. about it is that you know the ministry doesn't just take place in the singing moment. That's right. Oh. But even backstage. Oh you yeah. Know. I mean, yeah. God's opened doors. I, I lived in Nashville for a long time and I've worked backstage at a lot of concerts and God has opened doors for me to talk with people that travel, go on the road. They're tired, you know, and that, <laughs> just to uh -huh. talk with them and, you know, the, just to pray with each other. And, and most of the ministry does go on backstage. You might be on stage for five minutes singing a song, but you're backstage for a couple of hours. So, you know, it, it really does go on backstage. A As you're times. preparing, what just to, uh, we, about 30 seconds, yeah, sure. what is your 30 second Ooh. moment of preparing for worship or to be able to leave God's people? Because so many people have so many rituals. Yeah. What is something that you say, I got to do this yeah. to center me to be able to minister? I listen to a lot of great preaching. Okay. Wow. And I also turn on gospel music very loud in my car. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else, yes. yes. <laughs> so you can get a step. Yes, uh -huh. so you can get a step. You cut that step. Moving. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So that's what I do. I turn that music up and I put the preaching, good preaching. Okay, good preaching. Good preaching. Okay, good preaching. Okay. Right. Okay. Amen. You know, you're fueling your spirit, you yes. know, and, and getting yourself yes. ready and, and being anchored in God, yes. you know, and it helps you to meditate and stay focused. That's right. You know, so yes. so you're feeding yourself so that you can feed others. Yes, that's and my that's And that's the positive exchange, yes. Yes. you know, we yes. get in ministry. That's right. Wow. How that's, can people get yeah. in contact yes. with you? They can actually go to my website. Yes. It's rachelman.org, but there's actually an extra A in my name, so it's R-A-C-H-A-E-L. Oh, okay. M-A-N-N.org. There's a lot of stuff on there. Check out every tab. Got every some tab. Cool things happening right yes. now. So God yeah. is good. God Spell is it good. one more time. Rick. R A C H A E L. A E L. M A N N. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, that's the difference. Where you, baby, and, and um, how is it that your title? song, your title song for the CD. What did God tell you to do Ooh. to make that one the title song? I tell you, you know, when you're writing in the studio, there's usually that one song that sticks out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. the first song that you put together. Okay. And, uh, you know, so, but you'll know it in your spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel it. I like, I, I will know. I'll feel God be like, this is the song. This, this is, is it. But you need to name it. Wow. The title. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Just being able to share. So as you're traveling, as your platform, what would you say? Because again, now we, we see the look. Uh -oh. What is it, the genre? Because everybody, they're trying to typecast you and say, oh, what, yeah, what does she sing? What is, what is, what is your genre, genre okay. that you would say in this last, got 30 seconds yeah. to be able to Pop, share that? gospel, and R&B. Pop, gospel, and R&B. So CCM and gospel put it together and he made Rachel. That's who I am. So if you got gospel music over here, got the CCM side, that's who I am. Amen. I know, so Crystal Lewis, if you know Crystal Lewis, <laughs> yes. Yes. similar to that kind of stuff. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Well, Pastor Stokes, that's how we get, amen, we have that branch going on. <laughs> yes, we do. Rachel Mann <laughs> is Rachel her Mann. name, and we are so excited again. Well, thank yes, you for are. being thank here, you. sharing and your it was ministry so nice with meeting us. It's a sure. blessing yeah. to have you here well, to share you. on the program. Now, you brought the era of where God is saying the yes. anointing is oh, there. Mm -hmm. The thank anointing God. is there, so we appreciate you thank sharing your ministry. We're going to get out the way so that you can continue to do what 
God has called you to do because we don't do that. Amen. So we're excited again, you all. We're going to be blessed by the music ministry of Rachel Mann. And we are, when we say excited, we are definitely excited. Rachel Mann. Thank you.
That's Hallelujah. Rachel Mann. Amen, Hallelujah. Pastor Stone. Rachel Mann, God. just blessing us yes. in song yes. and really ministering to us yes. through the words of her song, letting us know really that God is in control. Is in control. And even when you don't think God is in control, he's always has it under control. Yes. You know what, Pastor yes. Davis? I am reminded of times when we go through wilderness experiences. Yes. Have you ever been through yes. the wilderness? <laughs> yes. You know, and when you're in the wilderness experience, I was reading the other day throughout the Old Testament mm -hmm. in the beginning of time, how the children of Israel, they were the chosen, chosen. people of God. Yes. They yes. were chosen and you are chosen. Yes. But yet with being chosen, they had to go through or they went through yes. uh, 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 oppression yes. by Pharaoh. Yes. Now, how is it uh -huh. that you can be chosen, chosen. and yet go through My. oppression and devastating situations? Yes. And with the oppression, they were working day in yes. and day out yes. and day in and day out. Out yes. and suffering, but yet chosen. Suffering, uh, but uh, yet chosen. Uh, Maybe yes. you're watching right yes, now, right and now. you know that you are chosen of God. You are yes. child of the King, yes. but you are suffering. You're suffering yes. in your body. You're suffering, suffering. in your mind. Mm. You're suffering in your family, yes. in your finances. Yes. I want you to know yes. that there is a in. Result. Yes, it is. For the yes, devil it is. may have meant it for evil, yes. but God can turn it yes, around God. for your good. Yes. So what do you do? Do you quit? Do you stop? No, you keep laboring. Yes. You keep working. Yes. You keep doing. Yes. Because what is it about your labor? Yes. Your yes, labor is not in vain, not in right? Vain. Yes. God began to speak to me and share with me. He said, First Corinthians uh, 15, 58 says, for us to continue so that we'll not be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your work is not in vain mm. in the Lord. God is encouraging me, and I want to encourage you. What you've been doing, there are a lot of you feeling that I'm tired of church, I'm tired of preaching, I'm tired of singing in the choir, I'm tired of getting up out of bed, I'm tired of going to work, but God wants to encourage us, Pastor Stokes, that our labor is not in vain. See, we're not working toward our physical. We think we're working toward a paycheck. We think right, we're working right, for the love right, of our family right. and Exactly. our friends, but God said we're working toward the love of him so that we can get that great reward. You say the children of Israel, they toiled and they toil. What we got to do is make sure that our goal and our perspective is on him. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God That's and right. all these things oh. will be added. The problem that some of us have done is that we've gotten our eyes off the prize. So we're seeking so many other things. So the reason the children of Israel persevered because of the fact somebody told them that there was a blessing just yes. ahead. There was blessing. a blessing just yeah, ahead. Yeah, and because yeah. I was told that a blessing was just ahead, then I am determined in my mind, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to be, I'm, I don't care what you say, my blessing is just ahead. So my working is not in vain, although it may look like it, mm. my working is not in vain. So the children of Israel had that goal. Yes, they set yes, that thing yes, in mind. Yes. I challenge you now, whatever it is that God has prophesied to you, whatever it is that he has told you that he has put in your destiny, your purpose and your future. Stick to it. Don't let anybody get in your ear. Don't let anybody talk down to you or be negative. God is saying your work is not in vain. He's going to reward you, daughter. He's going to reward you, sister. Stay in that prayer line. Stay in that church. Stay right there. I know everybody's saying you should leave. Stay in the marriage. Uh -uh, you should give up this. God is saying your work is not in vain. That's right. Keep your eyes on the prize. Yes. Well, there is a promise. And one thing about God, God is not a man that he should not, uh, neither the son of man yes. that he should repent. Yes. So if God said it, it yes. shall happen. Yes. Can you imagine God promising you something and when you think he should bring you out of it, he yes. has hardened Pharaoh's heart? Yes. He said, Pharaoh, no, I'm going to make sure <laughs> Pharaoh enforces <laughs> even worse labor yes. on yes. you. But you've got to know that there's always a I window. Yes. There's 
yes. always a door. Yes. Your miracle will happen. Yes. Doors will open for you. Why? Because God is for you. Yes. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Listen, the Bible says that if you sow, uh -huh. you shall reap. reap. That's the so Bible. don't yes. give yes. up. Don't quit just because it's getting hard, just because it's getting difficult, just because you don't know when, how, or where God's going to do it. Yes. Just trust in God and know that God will do it. He will come through. He's never yes. failed me. Never. He's never left me down. Yes. He's never forsaken me. Yes. Even when you feel like you've got to get beyond your feelings and tap into faith. Yes. Now faith is the substance, substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So walk by faith and not by sight. I challenge everyone, Pastor Stokes, that we're to press toward the mark. Again, for the higher calling in God in Jesus Christ. But the thing that we have to do, the Bible begins to tell us this. Now, he charges us because, see, we think it's so good. Yeah. He said, now, he that putteth his hand to the plow mm -hmm. and looketh back is not fit. That's see, right. what we have That's to understand right. is even everybody always preaching about Lot's wife, that she looked back. The thing is, she looked back, not physically. She looked back in her mind and desired where she was. See, everybody's trying to focus. Oh, she turned around with her physical eye. No, she turned around. She desired to go back. I tell you now, press forward. There's a blessing for your future. Stop looking back in your mindset saying, I wish I woulda, coulda, shoulda. And God is saying, I put blessings before you, Hallelujah. not curses. Hallelujah. He said, I cause you. You don't have to have nobody to prophesy over you. The Bible Hallelujah. in the book of Deuteronomy 28 says, you're blessed going out. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed in your down sitting. You're blessed in your uprising. You're blessed in the field. God yes, is telling yes. us that we're already blessed. What we have to do is be determined in our mind that God has a greater destiny in front of us than what has been behind us. But what we have to do is, as Pastor Stokes said, God is saying for you to stay focused. Some of you have given up on your focus tonight. Some of you have given up on your vision. Yes, God yes. has given you business in the marketplace yes, and he's yes. told you to go and preach and you're yes. running and he's told you to start your business and you're not. Some of you are great cooks and you cook for everybody and have not even a business license. God says some of you are sowing for the church, you're sowing for many people and yet and still you don't have a business life. God is saying stop being pimped and prostitute and go and get the license because there is wealth in your hand but you're giving it to everybody else. I speak to your future that you will no longer be the borrower but the lender. Hallelujah. That's right. You have a great future ahead of you and you've got to trust God and walk it out by faith. Yes. You've yes. got to know that the blessings of the Lord are upon you. Yes. And it doesn't matter what's behind you. Yes. You know, just like Pharaoh's army. Yes. And it doesn't matter what's before you like the Red Sea. <laughs> yes. Guess what? God can See? part the Red Sea yes. and cause yes. you to cross over on yes. dry land. That's so there's nothing too hard for nothing. God. You've just got to trust him. That's See it. God working it out. See God moving. Yes, That's why yes. we praise and we bless God because we know that God is able. Yes, he but not is. only is he able, uh, he's on, able yeah. to do. Yes, he's yes, not only yes, able yes. to do, but he's able to do exceedingly. Exceedingly. Exceedingly, but not only that, <laughs> abundantly. Not only yes, abundantly, but above, above all that you're even wow. able to comprehend or think wow. within your mind yes. the God you serve is able to do it. So you've got to walk out Ephesians 3 and 20. Yes. Now unto him who's able to yes, do it exceedingly yes, yes. and abundantly and above all the way able to ask or think according to the power that worketh within you. And if you have God on the inside, then you have power. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So you've got to walk up strong. Yes, even yes. though it gets hard, <laughs> even though it gets difficult. Yes, keep yes. walking. Keep moving. Walk in courage. Walk in boldness. Do not God. allow fear to overtake your my mind. God, for God, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he's given you power, yes, love, love, and a sound, sound mind. mind. You will not lose your mind. No. You will not go crazy. No. You will not worry yourself to death. You will not be frustrated. Yes. You will not walk in worry. No, you will walk no, by no. faith and yes, know that if yes. God said it, it shall happen. It shall, it yes. shall come to pass. Yes. And I'm standing on it now, yes, Pastor. Yes, yes, I'm yes. standing yes. on God's word. And I know for a fact because the word 
has declared in Proverbs Hallelujah. 3 and 5 that if I trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to yeah. my own yeah. understanding, God has got a blessing for me, but I got to change my mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. The little engine who could had to think beyond where he, right. there were more qualified, there were more had capability. Right, there right. was an engine that had all the chemical makeup Hallelujah. that was designed, Hallelujah. but what God allowed him to do was pull more than his load. Yes. He allowed him to pull more, and he said it was a small thing that he said, I think I can, I think I can. Yeah. God said that as you begin to purpose in your mind that this is the thing that he has called you Hallelujah. to, this is the thing that he has purposed me to pull, that once I get, the blessing part was about that he thought he could till he got to the top, but to baby, top. when he got to the top, he could rest a oh. little bit. He Woo. could rest a little bit yes, because he, he saw the journey on the way down, and yes. there were so many yes, yes. that talked about him. Oh, look at him. Look at her. I knew she wasn't going to do it. I knew he wasn't going to make it. I know. <laughs> Look at him. He took on too much. That's what people are saying about your ministry. Right, That's what right, people are right. saying about your marriage, exactly. your life, and the things that you have. They're saying that you took on too much. Yes. But if God has destined it and yes, put it in yes. your mind, you have to be like the little engine who could, I think I can. But you'll think you can because it's on the inside of you. They heard, I think I can. On the inside of my spirit, I know I can. I know I, I can. I know I can. And I will. And I uh, shall. Yes. The Bible says, "What well, worthy of the worthy. vocation where <laughs> you have been, been called. called. Yes. You know, and you, it's so easy to say that you don't have the money, that you don't have the friends, you don't know uh, what to do. It's easy to come up with excuses. Easy. But you've got to get rid of all of the excuses he, and start speaking what you know that you can that's do. It. Yes. Paul put it this way, I can do all things through all Christ things. who yes. strengthens me. It's not you, but it's the God in it's you. God in He's working yes. the work through you. Yes. And you've got to lean on yes. him, like Pastor Yavis said. Yes. You've got to lean on lean God on <laughs> and not on your own yes. understanding. Yes. Do you not know that God will give you vision? Yes. Do you not know that God will give you provision? Pro Do yes. you not know that God will give you strategy? Yes. Yes. Do you not know that God will give you an action plan? Yes. Do you not know that God will bring it to pass? Yes. He shall bring it to pass. Yes. Stop saying to yourself, it shall not happen and it won't happen. Honey, your God is too big. <laughs> He's too yes, mighty. He is. He's too yes, powerful he is. for you yes, to doubt God. You must be a yes, believer in this day. I don't care how hard it gets. You must be a believer. believer. You cannot doubt. You cannot fear. You've got to believe God. Yes. You've got to stand on his word. You've got to stand on everything that he has done, everything that you know that God shall do. Walk by faith and not by sight. And I promise you, God. whatever God has said, whatever God God's word is on the word. God will put fashion yes. to it. God yes. will put form to it. Yes. And he will yes. bring it to pass. Yes. Hallelujah. We encourage you tonight. Dial that number. We got a few more moments Hallelujah. tonight. Dial that number. 770-300-9828. There are still prayer warriors in there. Yes. You're saying, yes. why are you all talking to us this yes. way? We don't want our sisters and our brothers to be without or exactly. lost. Guess what? Exactly. We came tonight just to give you a word of encouragement. Hallelujah. Again, there is a blessing for you and it is best for you because God has your name on it. Yes, We're wanting does. to share yes, with you does. tonight. Thank you for continuing to watch Atlanta Live, WATC. Yes. Continue to call them, support them. Put it on Facebook. Let them know on Facebook. Go to WATC.TV and let them know how much you appreciate the program. We're here only because of God opening that up. And so, Pastor Stokes, if you don't mind, this last two minutes, if you don't mind, can you just pray us out and pray for those yeah. that are watching let, now. Let's touch and agree, you know, and this is what we're doing. We're touching and agreeing and we are praying for each other yes. and we're praying for you. Bow yes, your God. heads in prayer as we pray for you. Father, in the name Bless of Jesus, name, you God. are our rock and a yes, weary God. land. Yes, you are a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. Yes, God. We touch and agree right now yes, that you would touch those that are watching right yes, now. God. For right God, now, you said God. we can cast our cares on oh, you Baba, because yeah, you God. care for yes, us. God. Yes, and so we release every right care every problem, every burden into the oh, hands yes, of the God. Lord. Yes, and God. we trust you, God, because trust we 
you, know God. that you're yes, going God. to work it out. Yes, God, God, we are leaning on you and yes, depending God. on you. Yes, to the God. one who's sick, to the one yes, who's going God. through financial yes, challenges, God. problems in their marriage, yes, God. problems with the vision oh, for God, their life. Lord, God. God, we pray now, oh, God, God, that you will work it out, Yes, God, work it out, God. we believe in the power of God. Yes, God, I'm I. Yes, God, yes, God. But the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not walk. Yes, Lord, God, Father, we thank you now, God. And it is done, God. I'm a present help in the God, we believe it, God. And we believe in you, God. Yes, God. We touch and agree and believe for everyone who is watching right now. And it is so, God. And it is so. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is with you. God is there for you. And we thank God for you. Continue to watch Atlanta Live. Continue to support the ministry. I'm Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie, Disciples of Christ Christian Ministries, DOCCM.org. And I'm Pastor Wandelin Stokes, Deeper Life in Christ Ministries. We love you. Atlanta Live, always thinking about you. Blessings.